Welcome to Radiologist Headquarters. Today we'll be talking about ultrasound of epididymitis and orchitis. I'm Dr. Dan Koval, and this episode is sponsored by Samsung Ultrasound. The beautiful images you're about to see were obtained on a Samsung RS85 Prestige ultrasound unit. I'm going to show three cases of epididymitis and orchitis, highlighting key teaching points throughout. So starting with case one, this was a male in his 70s presenting with right squirtle pain and swelling. So this is a transverse view showing the right testis and the left testis, and note how the right epididymis is enlarged, and there's an adjacent anechoic hydrocele fluid in the scrotal sac. When we add color Doppler flow, there's symmetric flow to the testes, but there's increased flow to this right epididymis. Normally the epididymis will have similar or decreased flow compared to the adjacent testis. Now when we focus in on the right hemiscrotum, you can see that that right epididymal head is enlarged and heterogeneous relative to the adjacent testis. And here it measures 1.4 centimeters. Normally the epididymal head will measure 1 to 1.2 centimeters and be homogeneous. Now we're looking at the epididymal body, which is also enlarged and heterogeneous. And we see marked increased color Doppler flow throughout the epididymis with reactive changes in the adjacent scrotal soft tissues. Just for comparison, here's the non-inflamed left epididymis in the same patient showing very minimal but normal blood flow. On that symptomatic right side, we can also see that there's a simple hydrocele with a volume of about 19 cc's. In reactive hydrocels, we can sometimes see in the setting of epididymitis. So some key points which you can also find in the episode show notes. The epididymis is a tubular structure on the posterior superior testis where sperm matures. And it's composed of three parts, the head, body, and tail. Epididymitis is inflammation of the epididymis, and it's usually bacterial in etiology, most commonly due to retrograde ascent from the bladder or the prostate gland. And the causative agent varies based on age. So in adult males under the age of 35, it's more commonly a sexually transmitted disease due to gonorrhea or chlamydia. But in adults over 35, E. coli and other coliform bacteria are more commonly seen. The presentation is variable. Usually there's a gradual onset of scrotal pain with swelling and urinary symptoms like dysuria. And even though the onset of pain is usually more gradual than the acute symptoms of testicular torsion, torsion is still in the differential and must be excluded. Ultrasound findings for epididymitis will see epididymal enlargement, hyperemia, and hypoagogenicity of the epididymis. And usually that hyperemia will precede the grayscale changes, meaning that with early epididymitis, you might just see increased vascularity, but otherwise a normal grayscale appearance. So this case was a bit more advanced. And infection usually starts in the tail and then spreads to the body and the head. That's why in this case, the vascularity of the body was much more pronounced than that in the head. And sometimes you can just have isolated tail involvement. All right, let's move on to case two. So this was a pediatric patient, a teenager presenting with right scrotal pain, but he had no history of dysuria or symptoms of an infectious process. So here we're looking at the right epididymis and you can see it's heterogeneous with some increased vascular flow on color Doppler imaging. There's the epididymal body, also mildly heterogeneous, but with increased vascular flow and also some hyperemia in the adjacent soft tissues. When we look at the testis on the same side, the right testis, you can also see that there's increased vascularity of this testis which we can appreciate on real-time imaging. So this is the grayscale appearance on this side, and over on the right-hand side, we see there's marked vascularity of the testis there, particularly where it abuts the epididymis. For comparison, here's the normal left testis. There's that hyperemic right testis, again, particularly at the anterior aspect, showing that it's reactive hyperemia secondary to the inflamed epididymis. So this is an example of epididymitis and orchitis, which is inflammation of the testicle. And it turned out to be a non-infectious cause, which we see more commonly in children. So trauma, repetitive activities such as sports are the most common causes in males prior to sexual maturity. Another common cause in this population is a torsed appendix testis or appendix epididymis, which I covered in a separate lecture that you can feel free to check out. And that can cause a reactive epididymitis. Other causes would be vasculitis and then medications such as amiodarone, which is a cardiac antiarrhythmic agent. In 20 to 30% of the time, epididymis will have associated orchitis. Usually the scrotal infection will start in the epididymis and then it can spread to the testis, the scrotal sac, or the scrotal wall. And it's less common to have isolated orchitis. Usually it's due to a secondary infection from epididymitis. We can see it in children though, usually that's a viral etiology such as mumps. And ultrasound findings of orchitis are similar to epididymitis. There's enlargement of the gland, hyperemia, and also hypoagogenicity of the parenchyma. All right, let's look at the final case, case three. So this was a male in his 40s that presented with increasing scrotal edema and pain. So here we're looking at the left scrotum and note again, the epididymis is heterogeneously hypoechoic. 
Here we have a complex hydrocele adjacent to the epididymis. It has septations within it. When we add color Doppler, we see increased flow within that epididymal head, and the epididymal body is extremely heterogeneous and enlarged, also with significant hypervascularity. There again is that adjacent complex hydrocele, and we see inflammation of the epididymal tail. But then note also, there's increased hyperemia in that adjacent testis. So let's look at that further. Increased color Doppler flow, and also heterogeneous parenchyma, and the testis is enlarged. You can see the volume here is about 44 cc's. The normal testicular volume is usually between about 12.5 and 19 cc, so this is significantly enlarged. And here we're looking at a transverse view showing that complex left hydrocele again, the heterogeneous left testis, but also a right hydrocele and heterogeneous enlargement of the right testis. We see increased vascular flow within the left testis here, as well as the edematous scrotal wall indicating inflammation and cellulitis but also increased hyperemia in that right testis. And when we look at that a bit more closely, again, there's that hyperemia. And this testis is also enlarged, a volume of 37 cc's. Now, what do you think that is due to? Well, here we look at that right epididymis, also heterogeneously enlarged hypoechoic with increased vascular flow. So epididymitis and orchitis can be bilateral, as in this case, and that's usually a marker of more severe disease. There can be associated complications, particularly with advanced infection. Notably, scrotal wall inflammation, as in this case with scrotal wall edema and hyperemia, usually indicating cellulitis. Complicated hydrocele can occur, which would be a hydrocele that contains some debris and also septations, but that should be differentiated from a pyocele, which is purulent fluid collection with mass effect in the scrotal sac. Usually, a complicated hydrocele won't have mass effect, but a pyocele will, and a pyocele is more likely to need surgical drainage, whereas a complicated hydrocele can often just resolve with treatment. Abscess can also occur in the epididymis, testis, or scrotal wall. And the most dreaded complication is testicular ischemia and infarct. And that occurs in the setting of advanced epididymal orchitis, which can lead to obstruction of the venous outflow from testis. So what we would see in that case is decreased color Doppler testicular blood flow. And with spectral Doppler evaluation, you might see reverse testicular diastolic arterial flow or complete absence of arterial flow if advanced. All right, thank you so much for joining me, and I hope you found this educational. Thank you again to our sponsor, Samsung Ultrasound. If you like this lecture, a great free way to support us is to subscribe to the video podcast on Spotify or Apple, or by clicking the subscribe button on YouTube. It would be outstanding if you would consider leaving a five-star rating on Spotify or Apple. I also post interesting teaching files throughout the week that you can find by following us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit, or by clicking the YouTube community tab. Until next time, radiology is life.